Hello and welcome, I'm Stormer and uh, this is Mass Effect. Um, decided I'm going to do a sort of playthrough let's play of it. Um, we're going to start a new career and we're going to play as a welcome female to shepherd. Alliance military so. database. Classified information requested. So we'll connect to the database. This will go horribly wrong. Establishing secure connection. Because it can't secure find the data. Connection confirmed. Go enter new ID. I forgot there were quick start options. We'll go custom female. Please log in to access your profile. Um, hmm. And yes, we're playing as female shepherd because, as far as I'm concerned, that is the canonical shepherd. Um, what's a good name? There, that seems like a good name. First name doesn't really matter because you're never referred to it in game. So, just pick the best name you can. Is that where I customise the appearance, or did I miss the appearance customization? Warning. No, Data you do it now, don't you? Detected. Been a little while since I played this, so um, I'm a little bit rusty. But uh, I mentioned on Twitter I was going to do this, um, so we'll reconstruct our profile. Confirm pre-service history. But, uh, do I usually go? So these are the. Um, sort of background options. If you're familiar with Bioware games, you'll know what's coming here. If you're familiar with Mass Effect, which you probably are, you'll know exactly what these all are. Um, I usually go Earthborn, so I will go with that. Um, Confirm psychological profile. And... I don't think I've ever chosen the War Hero path. Um, I think I have done Soul Survivor. Um, but War Hero is pretty cool as well. Um, Ruthless, I feel, best suits a character that's going to play as a renegade, um, which I generally don't play as because I find it easier to build towards a paragon than towards a renegade. Um, I have attempted renegade plays in the past, but you miss out on some stuff with them, I find, so that's generally what I do. I think I'll go with uh, Soul Survivor. Confirm um, military specialization. And these are all the class options, obviously. Um, I generally play as a soldier in the first game and then switch to an infiltrator in the second game. Um, mostly because sniper rifles are such a pain in the butt in the um, in the first game. So I'm going to go with soldier. Um, Confirm facial identification. So let's have a play with our appearance. There are presets, none of which are particularly exciting. Um, so we'll have a bit of a play here. So just uh, go a little bit lighter, not too, not like deathly pale. That looks good. Uh, facial structure. Look how simplistic the models are in this one. That looks right. Because this is a game from what 2007 now. Yeah, that looks good. So we'll get that complexion, older or younger. I like that. And do I want a scar? Um, I suppose a scar kind of matches the uh, soul survivor option, but uh, how about that? Just a nice little cut under the eye there. Yep, grazed by some debris. I reckon that's what that is. Um, oh, we actually get a fair bit of options here. I don't remember having this many options. Thin or thicker neck. I'll leave most of these default. I think I'm not gonna. Oh, you can do that. I'm not gonna uh, play too much with um, these options. If this was like an older Scrolls game, I'd spend like half an hour here picking out uh, how we're gonna do this. Cheek gaunt. Ah, oh, that just sort of determines how. Yeah, I get that. Uh, ears. Make the ears a little bit smaller. Yeah, not too much. And yeah, they're they're all right. Um, eyes. Let's look at the eye colour. No, look at me. Damn it. Um, yeah, that looks alright. Eye height. Bring it down a little bit. Width. That's basically their spacing. Um, I'm not going to change that too much. Depth determines how set they are. That'll stay there. Brow depth. Yeah, whether you want those come out. Brow height. Eh, uh, it looks about alright. 
Iris color. This is what I want. Um, color eyes. I haven't changed the hair color yet. I'll get to the hairstyles shortly. I like the idea of having blue eyes. Or maybe green eyes. Green eyes. Yeah, that's nice. Green's my favorite color, so we'll go green. Jaw. Uh, the problem you sometimes find with these games is that what looks good here in the character selection... Um, yeah, narrow the chin a bit. Uh, if I can narrow the jaw, that's a bit better, yeah. Create a slightly longer face. What looks good in the character selection mouth? Her mouth is really poking out there. Can I change that? Yes, I can. Um, is you tend to find that what looks good in the character selection doesn't always look good in-game. So, bring the mouth in a lot. Narrow it a bit. Try and reduce the lips, and yeah, it still looks a bit doofy. Looks a lot doofy, actually. Uh, this is gonna look really doofy. No, 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 in the middle. Let me look at your mouth. That looks alright. Yeah, that looks about okay. Uh, nose, just try and make it a little bit less pointy. That looks better. Yep. Looks like a more normal nose. Uh, hair. Okay, this is the bit where we spend a lot of time. Um, I usually have a black-haired shepherd. Um, mostly because blonde in the first game looks really dumb. Um, but I could go red. Red seems very canonical. Um, like, it's a red-headed shepherd by default, and it's a red-headed cover on the third game, I think it is. So, just see what uh, hair options. It's kind of annoying you don't have, like, a, a, a proper long hair option. Uh, for Shep, like you have that um, and that, but you don't have like a ponytail or anything like that. So I usually go with either that one or this one, which is think is basically the default. Um, I'll go with. I'll try something a bit different. Yeah, I'll go with that one, the messy chiseled one. I still haven't decided what color I want though. Blonde shepherds are just weird. I, I don't understand blonde shepherd. Uh, black she black haired shepherd's what I normally do, so I might go auburn or I might go. Well, that's nice, that nice deep red. That's probably a bit unnatural, but eh, we'll go with that. Um, I think the brow has to. Uh, that's to do with the eyebrow. I'll leave that where it is, but I suppose it should be coloured the same as the hair, shouldn't it? That's the same thing. Hmm. I'm not super happy with that actually. I think I'll change that hair colour again. I spend a lot of time doing this, by the way. This is kind of my thing. Yeah, that's better. That looks a bit better. She still looks a bit doofy, but... Uh, we'll just have to put up with it for the moment. Um, makeup, I tend to turn that off, because I'm not a big fan of having much. Maybe some eyeshadow would be good, though. Uh, yeah, that's better. Makes the eyes actually look like they're part of the face. Okay, so, that's... Uh, our shepherd, that's what she's going to look like. Um, Profile reconstruction complete. Yep. So we will accept that. And I think that will kick us. Identification Combat difficulty. Auto level up off. Target assist high. Yep. Squad power usage is active. Subtitles are on. Auto save is on. Um, and I'll leave combat difficulty at normal. Um, I usually play on normal, so it's not um, too difficult. I could go hard, but I just I prefer to just automate a lot of the stuff I do in this game because I like to play it for the story and have fun. So, and I'm playing this on PC, so the load times aren't incredibly long. Anyway, I'll shut up for the cutscene now. Well, what about Shepard? Earthborn, but no record of her family. Doesn't have one. She was raised on the streets. Learned to look out for herself. She saw her whole unit die on a cruise. She could have some serious emotional scars. Every soldier has scars. Shepard's a survivor. Is that the kind of person we want protecting the galaxy? That's the only kind of person who can protect the galaxy. I'll make the call. I do love the way this game starts. <coughs> Just so we're clear, I didn't talk there because the music's really good. They are 
Start Terrace Prime relays in range. Initiating transmission sequence. Commander. We are connected. Calculating transit mass and destination. The relay is hot. Acquiring approach vector. All stations secure for transit. Thrusters, check. Navigation, check. Internal emissions sync engaged. All systems online. Drift, just under 1500 K. 1500 is good. Your captain will be pleased. I hate that guy. Nihilus gave you a compliment. So you hate him. You remember to zip up your jumpsuit on the way out of the bathroom? That's good. I just jumped us halfway across the galaxy and hit a target the size of a pinhead. So that's incredible. Besides, specters are trouble. I don't like having them on board. Call me paranoid. You're paranoid. The Council helped fund this project. They have a right to send someone to keep an eye on their investment. Yeah, that is the official story. But only an idiot believes the official story. They don't send specters on shakedown runs. So there's more going on here than the captain's letting off. Joker, status report. Just cleared the mass relay, Captain. Stealth systems engaged. Everything looks solid. Good. Find a comm buoy and link us into the network. I want mission reports relayed back to Alliance Brass before we reach Eden Prime. Aye, aye, Captain. Better brace yourself, sir. I think Nihilus is headed your way. He's already here, Lieutenant. Tell Commander Shepard to meet me in the calm room for a debriefing. You get that, Commander? I'm on my way. Is it me or does the captain always sound a little pissed off? Only when he's talking to you, Joker. Ah, uh, Joker. My third favorite character in the Mass Effect series. Well, fourth, I suppose. So, you'll find out who the others are later. Well, you already know who one of them is because it's Shepard. So, this is the Normandy. If you've never played a Mass Effect game before, um, You'll see a lot of the Normandy over the next three games. Commander. Looks like we had a smooth run. Um, <coughs> you heading down to see the captain? Sounds like you don't trust our Turian no guest. One. Sorry, Commander. Just having a chat with Adams down at Engineering. It didn't mean to cause any trouble. But you have to admit, something's odd about this mission. The whole crew feels it. You think the Alliance Brass is holding out on us? All we're supposed to do is test out the stealth system. Why is Captain Anderson in charge? And then there's Nihilus. Spectres are elite operatives, top covert agents. Why send a Spectre, a Turian Spectre, on a shakedown run? It doesn't add up. You don't trust Nihilus. I don't like Turians in general. It runs in my family. My grandfather fought in the first contact war. Lost a lot of friends when the Turians hit us. So I'm going to go down some of these dialogue trees a fair bit, um, just to explore them. 30 years ago. You can't blame Nihilus for that. No, I guess not. But it still makes me nervous to have a Spectre on board. Especially a Turian. We're an Alliance vessel, human military. But Nihilus doesn't answer to the captain like the rest of us. Spectres operate outside the normal chain of command. And they don't come along just to observe shakedown runs. <laughs> Nihilus looks like he's expecting some heavy action. I don't like it. I probably won't explore every dialogue tree like that, but luck, um, I'll do it when I feel like I want to have something explained or just explore the story a bit more. Um, so I have to remember where to go here. That's right. That way um, we can talk to a bunch of different people. That's where we meet the Doctor. What She's great. Commander? We won't be staying on Eden Prime too long, will we? I'm itching for some real action. I sincerely hope you're kidding, Corporal. 
Your real action usually ends with me patching up crew members in the infirmary. You need to calm down, Corporal. A good soldier stays cool even under fire. Sorry, Commander, but this waiting's killing me. I've never been on a mission like this before, not one with a Spectre on board. Just treat this like every other assignment you've had and everything will work out. Man, my Shepard still looks kind of derpy. You proved yourself on a coos. Everybody knows what you can do. This is my big chance. I need to show the brass what I can do. You're young, Corporal. You have a long career ahead of you. Don't do something stupid to mess it up. Don't worry, ma'am. I'm not going to screw this up. Uh, let's see what he thinks of Nihilus. What can you tell me about Nihilus? Turians are generally well respected by the other species. Their fleet has more patrols protecting Citadel space than any other. They don't always get on well with us, though. Some people find them too rigid. Others still blame them for the first contact war. As for Nihilus, I haven't said more than two words to him. He usually only speaks to the captain. I hope we get a chance to see him in action. I heard Nihilus took down an entire enemy platoon all by himself. What do you know about the Spectres? Only what I've heard. Spectre agents work directly for the Citadel Council. They usually work alone or in small groups. Spectres don't have any official power, though. Basically, they're a shadow organization with a mandate to preserve and protect galactic stability. Protect it at any cost. Don't forget that part. Spectres operate above the law. So I'm mostly just doing this to give a bit Why of background if you've never played Mass Effect now? before. Um, Spectres usually come from there's the some good background races, here. Like the Turians. We've been trying to get a human accepted into their ranks for years now. So far, it hasn't happened. Hey, Commander, you'd make a good Spectre. You're always getting dropped into impossible situations, forced to survive unbeatable odds. Just like you on a coos. I try not to think about a coos. Sorry, Commander. I, I didn't mean to offend you. I, I respect what you did there. We all do. Let's not dwell on the past, Commander. Was there something else you needed? Anyway, I'll leave this one here. Um, so, I just thought I'd pick that out because there's some good discussion of uh, the Spectres, which becomes important later on in the game. But also because um, it shows one of the things you can do in a dialogue tree here, which is you can actually set other people sort of off balance in an emotional way. Um, where you can basically sort of cut them off or do that kind of thing. Um, and it sort of shows the quality of the, uh, the voice acting that it works so well. Anyway, we're about to go into another cutscene, so I will shut up now and uh, we'll talk to Nilus. Commander Shepard, I was hoping you'd get here first. It will give us a chance to talk. The captain said he'd meet me here. He's on his way. I'm interested in this world we're going to, Eden Prime. I've heard it's quite beautiful. I've never been there. But you know of it. It's become something of a symbol for your people, hasn't it? Proof that humanity can not only establish colonies across the galaxy, but also protect them. But how safe is it, really? Do you know something? Your people are still newcomers, Shepard. The galaxy can be a very dangerous place. Is the Alliance truly ready for this? I think it's about time we told the Commander what's really going on. This mission is far more than a simple shakedown run. I figured there was something you weren't telling us. We're making a covert pickup on Eden Prime. That's why we needed the stealth systems operational. There must be a reason you didn't tell me about this, sir. This comes down from the top, Commander. Information strictly on a need-to-know basis. A research team on Eden Prime unearthed some kind of beacon during an excavation. It was Prothean. I thought the Protheans vanished 50,000 years ago. Their legacy still remains. The mass relays, the Citadel, our ship drives. It's all based on Prothean technology. This is big, Shepard. The last time humanity made a discovery like this, it jumped our technology forward 200 years. But Eden Prime doesn't have the facilities to handle something like this. We need to bring the beacon back to the Citadel for proper study. Obviously, this goes beyond mere human interests, Commander. This discovery could affect every species in Council space. Why didn't we keep the beacon for ourselves? You humans don't have the best reputation. Some species see you as selfish, too unpredictable, too independent, even dangerous. Sharing that beacon will improve relations with the Council. Plus, we need their scientific expertise. They know more about the Protheans than we do. The beacon's not the only reason I'm here, Shepard. Nihilus wants to see you in action, Commander. He's here to evaluate. I guess that explains why I bump into him every time I turn around. The Alliance has been pushing for this for a long time. 
Humanity wants a larger role in shaping interstellar policy. We want more say with the Citadel Council. The Spectres represent the Council's power and authority. If they accept a human into their ranks, it shows how far the Alliance has come. Not many could have survived what you went through on Akuz. You showed a remarkable will to live, a particularly useful talent. That's why I put your name forward as a candidate for the Spectres. Why would a Turian want a human in the Spectres? Not all Turians resent humanity. Some of us see the potential of your species. We see what you have to offer to the rest of the galaxy, and to the Spectres. We are an elite group. It's rare to find an individual with the skills we seek. I don't care that you're human, Shepard. I only care that you can do the job. I assume this is good for the Alliance. Earth needs this, Shepard. We're counting on you. I need to see your skills for myself, Commander. Eden Prime will be the first of several missions together. You'll be in charge of the ground team. Secure the beacon and get it onto the ship ASAP. Nihilus will accompany you to observe the mission. Um, hmm. Just wondering if any of these are worth uh, going down the dialogue tree of. Yeah, we'll talk about Eden Prime. I'd like to know more about Eden Prime before we touch down. It's a peaceful farming world, but it represents something much bigger. Eden Prime is one of our oldest and most successful colonies. It proved we were ready to face the challenges of settling new worlds. To forge a place for humanity beyond Earth, it symbolizes humanity's growth and evolution as a spacefaring species. And after this, it will be known as the world where humans made a discovery of galactic importance. Okay, I won't investigate the rest of that, but um, I just felt... Actually, no, I will, because I think the Protheans are worth talking about as well. What do you know about the Protheans? Just what they taught us in school. They were a technologically advanced species that ruled the galaxy 50,000 years ago. Then they vanished. Nobody really knows how or why, though I've heard plenty of theories. But everyone agrees, galactic civilization wouldn't exist without them. Their citadel is the very heart of galactic society, and without their mass relays, interstellar travel would be impossible. We all owe the Protheans a so, good debt. I don't want to assume that uh, people have played Mass Effect before, so sometimes I will take those dialogue options that explain something in the game that if you've played the game you'll know pretty well because it's fairly basic knowledge, but stuff like that, um, particularly the thing about the Protheans and things like that, I think are really important. I don't want to make assumptions about how much Mass Effect people have played. Anyway, we're going to um, head off to um, Eden word, Prime. Captain. We should be getting close to Eden. Captain, we got a problem. What's wrong, Joker? Transmission from Eden Prime, sir. You better see this. Bring it up on screen. Get down! We are under attack, taking heavy casualties! I repeat, heavy casualties! We can't! out after that no calm traffic at all just goes dead there's nothing reverse and hold at 38.5 status report 17 minutes out captain no other alliance ships in the area take us in joker fast and quiet this mission just got a lot more complicated a small strike team can move quickly without drawing attention it's our best chance to secure the beacon. Grab your gear and meet us in the cargo hold. Tell Elenko and Jenkins to suit up, Commander. You're going in. Okay, um, I'm gonna... Engaging once this cutscene ends, I'm gonna leave this video here and, uh... Put it up for Somebody the next episode. Somebody was doing serious digging here, Captain. Your team's the muscle in this operation, Commander. Go in heavy and head straight for the dig site. What about survivors, Captain? Helping survivors is a secondary objective. The beacon's your top priority. Approaching drop point one. Nihilus, you coming with us? I move faster on my own. 
Nihilus will scout out ahead. He'll feed you status reports throughout the mission. Otherwise, I want radio silence. Ready and able, sir. The mission's yours now, Shepard. Good luck. I thought about going down that dialogue tree, but eh, whatever. We are approaching drop point two. Okay, so I'm going to leave this video here, and uh, we will come back uh, to everything next time. Thank you for watching.